well, guess what? I was waiting for someone to start, and it's me. <laughs> it's, it's the holidays between Hanukkah, Christmas, finishing up the semester, and, uh, and this uh, ribbon cutting. Uh, my calendar's very, very full. But what a joyous occasion when I saw this last week on my calendar. It brought a big smile to my face. It's an honor to welcome you uh, to this occasion where we celebrate one of the biggest achievements you can celebrate in higher education, and that is opening state-of-the-art of facilities for our students. I want to start by um, uh, calling your attention to some of our uh, special guests this morning. First, Aviva Budd, who is a regent and one of the most active members of the Board of Trustees. Aviva, would you stand so we could say thank you? It's great to have you here. And the top secret is that Aviva's uh, nephew is here <laughs> as a student. So we're very, very proud that he joined us in music, I think, Aviva, his major. Yeah, he's doing very well. I also want to acknowledge the presence of uh, two of our elected officials, Susan Johnson and Greg Haddad. Greg, would you raise your hand, Susan? Yes. These are great, great colleagues, very uh, instrumental in what happens in higher education in Connecticut. And they're always, always doing, as I call, God's work on behalf of the system. So thank you to the two of you for all you do. So on this occasion, you know, presidents like to take credit for everything, but we can't. I have to thank Renee. Where's Renee Quiche? Renee and her staff. Stand up, Renee, because it is Renee and the staff that brings these projects in on time and on budget. And, you know, this is just a small part of her por portfolio. She just has to do from broken pipes to whatever crisis we have in, uh, in facilities. And the management of construction projects is, is really, she's an architect by training, and she does just a superb job. So, Renee, and to the facility staff, thank you. Today we have Noel Petra with us, who will, is the Deputy Commissioner. Noel is right here, and he'll be speaking and giving uh, greetings on behalf of DAS. And I want to say that we're in partnership with DAS, and some things sometimes don't go the, according to plan. And the team uh, that you had in place, Noel, was an extraordinary team. And they helped us get the project in on time and on budget. And I want to thank you for the leadership that they provided, and thank you in particular for providing leadership in DAS. Thank you, Noel. I'm always envious of architects. I wish I was an artist in general, and the architects that design the renovation really work closely with us, and today we have Will Spears, who's principal of MDS, which is Miller Dyer Spears Architects. Where is Will? I just spoke with him. There he is, right in front of me. Hi, Will. And I wanna say that the interesting thing about working with the firm was that they understood how little money we had. <laughs> And every time I said, how much is that going to cost? They said, well, you know, this is going to be pricey, but we can change it to this, to that. And they were always looking to maximize the dollar with great design. And as you can see it, these were a, a superb team of architects who really were creative artists and managed to bring the budget uh, and the project on time. So again, well, thanks to the firm for doing, doing all that they did. And then I became best friends with Randy Becker, the senior construction manager. And I would walk around, you know, my high heels, stamping my feet and say, how we do it, how we do it. <laughs> and uh, Randy was here every time I came. And it was just at the end when we were going to open the building for classes. And I came down panicked because I didn't know, you know, how close we were or how close we weren't. And there was Randy with people. And he was actually supervising a worker who was cutting cutting uh, bricks outside uh, to fill in a wall and making sure that the quality of the work was at his level. So I want to say to Randy and the people that he worked with from the construction company, PDS, you can't get a better con engineering company and construction company than that. And quality, quality, quality. He has such high standards and he made sure that every part of this project uh, met the standards that he set. So again, Randy, thank you to you and the construction company. In a few minutes, you're going to hear from Tyler Madden, who's class of 21. Tyler's a communications major and had his um, uh, internship this past summer with N NBC 
30, and uh, Tyler will talk to you about what facilities means to students, particularly when they're so tied to the major. Uh, and the facilities here, the television station and the radio station are critical in the development of our majors in communication. And then Dr. Andrew Utterbach will also greet you this, this morning. He's president of the University Senate, and Andrew is a professor in communications. And one of the things that happened uh, at the Senate meeting this, this year, which is unheard of, he stood up and with all this passion thanked Renee and the facility staff for this building because he said it made a huge difference in his teaching and the students learning. To Tyler and Andrew, you'll hear from them in a few minutes. So basically, this is a, a building connected to another building and it was ugly. It was ugly and horrible. This was the outside of the building. So I used to walk in here and then walk up these stairs and there was no direction as to whether you were going up or down or what, where you went. And then on top of it, underneath here was a vacuous dark space and I used to worry at night about young people in this dark vacuous space. I don't know what they were doing, but, <laughs> but I, wor I worried about the space. And, and, and I, when we talked to the architects about the space, I knew I had an idea, but I couldn't, of course, articulate it as well as an architect could. And I kept saying, could you do something to change the look of the outside of the building while we renovate? And this is what they came up with. They encapsulated the outside staircase, and it looks like it's an interior staircase. And they made this addition at the entryway. So it's just quite beautiful. So in this part of the building, as I said, you have the radio station and the television station, and it is all state of the art, and the faculty offices are upstairs, and they're just beautiful. In the other side is Goddard, and these two buildings were constructed together, don't ask me why, and they never had air conditioning, and they had really, really big problems with ventilation. So all of that was taken care of. In the other side of the building, you have the major for kinesiology and physical education. And that major prepares students who want to be trainers, coaches, physical education teachers, and they have a special laboratory also in Goddard. In addition to that, we have a science-based psychology major. We're very proud of this major, very competitive to get into. And the psychology major um, has a very strong component in undergraduate research. And if you read our tagline, it says, a liberal arts college practically applied. And the practically applied distinguishes us from private liberal arts colleges where it's just the liberal arts education. And the practically applied can be uh, uh, achieved in many ways, four ways at Eastern, and that's through undergraduate research, service learning, which is community service supervised by a faculty member, co-op, which is a paid internship, or internship, which is for credit. And so in the psychology lab, part in Goddard, you have the research labs for the psychology major, and the undergraduate students are there, and the faculty is here if you'd like to ask questions about it. And they do all kinds of research in terms of habit formation, uh, food attitude, and other kinds of research that the faculty is conducting, and then they include their students. So that's what you have in the buildings. But you and I know, you went to college, that the importance of the building, the facilities are great, but it's, what's ha it's what happens here in the teaching and learning experience of the faculty and the students. Many people will meet each other here. They'll be best friends for life. I have college friends that are still my best friends and they were the, one of the women was a godmother to my children and I met her in freshman year in college. Also here people will meet and they will have long time relationships and they will fall in love. And that's the wonderful thing about buildings like this, that it brings people together in, uh, in the best possible way. And you and I know the importance of an environment in terms of, of the experience that students have. And so when I came to Connecticut, uh, now 14 years ago, the main, I was offered another job and I took this one and the main reason I did that was because of the investment Connecticut was making in higher education at that time. They were pouring money into UConn and that was also happening at the state college system. These facilities, take a look around, I compete with any private college in the state and even out of state. And I thank the legislators 
the elected officials. I thank, of course, Mark Ojakian, who I'll introduce, I'll introduce him in a minute, who's the leader of the system. I, I thank the governor, Governor Malloy, and now, of course, Governor Lamont, and all of the people who understand that to keep the kids in Connecticut, you have to have good facilities. If you have buckets with dripping water down, they're not gonna come here. They're not gonna come. So we are very grateful to the state of Connecticut for the facilities that Eastern has. And so it is a uh, great honor and privilege as your president that I say, we're gonna have this ribbon cutting and celebrate the achievements of Eastern, one of which is superb teaching and learning in facilities that are state of the art. So thank you for being here this morning. Now I'd like to introduce Mark Ojakian. Mr. Ojakian, the president of the system, comes to us with a depth of knowledge and breadth of knowledge in terms of the state of Connecticut, particularly in terms of its needs. He's made a mark already in the state as our leader for uh, developing the economic development initiatives of the system connected to the state needs, and particularly the, college, the colleges, the community colleges. But he's done that also with the state universities. But what I want to say about Mark Ojakian as the leader of the system of the state university colleges and university is that he is all about the students, and that's been his hallmark. So the day that he leaves, he can say, with his head held up high, that he was always committed to the students of the system. He comes to Eastern, he speaks to the students with great respect and shows them great attention, and they love to meet with him. He's responsive to student needs and to faculty needs, and we are very, very privileged that Mark Ojakian is the leader of the system. And thank you, Mark, for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, President Nunez. With an introduction like that, I should just sit down and shut up. <laughs> but no, it really, it really is my pleasure once again to be here um, at Eastern. Um, I also, too, want to uh, thank the legislature, uh, the legislators that are here today for their great support, not only of this project, but for public higher education you know, in general. When budget cuts come down, uh, they are the ones that stand firm uh, to make sure that the needs that we have in our colleges and universities are met. And of course, one of my bosses, uh, Regent Bud, uh, thank you uh, for being here um, as well. She's an incredible region, an incredible leader, um, and came a long way to be here today, so uh, we really appreciate it. I just want to say a couple of things. Um, I'm not gonna talk about construction. Those of you that know me know that I know nothing about construction. Um, I wanna say a couple things about this incredible uh, university. Um, uh, President Nunez is right, I've been here uh, many times. I love to come here and meet with the students. I love to come here um, and uh, celebrate the diversity of this incredible um, institution. Um, the institution would not be what it is and would not be the hallmark, I think, of public institutions in our region, if not of our country, without the incredible leadership of Elsa Nunez. Um, she has taken this institution to the next level, um, not only in terms of look around and see the buildings, but in terms of what goes on inside of the buildings. Uh, the incredible team she's assembled, the incredible faculty and staff that are here, uh, are a testament to a great leader. Um, and it's been my pleasure uh, to have been part of your team uh, since I uh, came here. The second thing I will say about this institution, I was sitting down there and I was looking above the sign and watching all of the incredible things being showcased on that digital, whatever you call it, on top of uh, the sign. Um, promoting diversity, talking about philanthropy in terms of let's give money, let's, it's, let's tip a cop and everything goes to a certain um, uh, charity. Whether it's you know, bringing opportunity scholars here um, from, from other states under the president's leadership um, to really get a full-blown education here at Eastern. I recently attended a meeting, um, a, a forum on trans rights and trans um, issues in higher education. These are the places where social justice issues percolate and where we find comfort, 
and allies and were able to make progress within not only the institution walls, but within the state and within the country. And, you know, President Nunez and I are very fond of saying that at a time when people would try to tear us down and build walls to keep us apart, it's institutions like Eastern that move us together, that celebrate our diversity and make us uh, stronger. So it's my pleasure to be here today. Noel at, at DAS, thank you uh, for everything you've done. Uh, Keith and my team, um, I, they couldn't be here today because they had another, I think, um, college to be at to <laughs> kind of make sure it gets done on time and so that, so that the president's not stomping her high heels <laughs> um, in their office. Um, it, it really is quite the visual, I have to, I have to say that. I thought you only did that in my office. Um, <laughs> No, but, but, but seriously, um, thank you, Eastern, for showing us the way, for showing us how to be incredible academics, but also showing us how to be humbler, kinder, especially at this time of year. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's my distinct uh, pleasure to introduce um, Noel, and Noel is, of course, the Deputy Commissioner of DAS, and Dr., um, uh, uh, I think it was Dr. Kavanaugh who once told me he had met Noel and was really impressed with his um, achievements, and most importantly, how much he cared about the universities and colleges. Noel, please come forward. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's great to stand up here and get all these accolades. Thank you, Noel. Thank you, Noel. I will tell you, I've had very little involvement. All the credit goes to the team. Generally, in my, in my position, I'm supposed to be running, you know, the vision, the strategy. The reality is I deal with the problems. And by the time they get to me, the problems are huge and they're a big mess. And I spend most of my day working on them. And when I got the email to come and speak here at Goddard Hall, I said, Goddard Hall? What? What's, what's Goddard Hall? I don't know anything about Goddard Hall because there weren't any problems. So I had to meet with my team and I said, look guys, in the future, when there's a project going really well, I'd like to know about it. It would be really nice. It'd probably make it more fun to show up at work. And so um, while it's rare in construction especially, you've all heard the horror stories, every once in a while the project just kind of meshes. The team meshes. Everybody gets along. And when you have a problem, no matter what side you're on, you call up and you say, I've got a problem. And the other side says, well, here, I've got a solution. And everybody works together. And it's very, very uncommon. But when it happens, it's really a special thing. And the result is a beautiful building, a happy president. <laughs> and you get a project that's two months under, under schedule and a million dollars under budget. And that hardly ever happens. So we can, we can all clap to the team for getting along. It's really great. But, but we can't forget, and it's easy to admire the bricks and mortars, it's easy to touch the physicality of the building, but what we can't forget and what we need to be most appreciative of is the mission of the building, which is to support the education of the students here, who when they graduate, they're going to become the next generation of Connecticut's workforce. They're going to bring Connecticut back to where we were in the past. We're going to come back to prominence economically, industrially, you name it, we're going to be there. And it's all because of these schools. It starts right here. And all we're doing is facilitating these kids who are going to lead us into the next generation. So thank you very much. Thank you, Noel. Noel, Noel, Noel. I didn't want them to know about the million dollars. <laughs> so nobody in this room tell anybody. <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce Will Spears, who is a principal for MDS. And as I said, one of the best set of architects that I have ever worked for. Will? Thank you, President Nunes, that's very generous. We don't hear that very, very often, <laughs> as often as, as we'd like, although I think it's true. <laughs> um, so I very much, um, the comments from Mr. Petra very much resonate with me as well. This is a project that seemed to go swimmingly uh, all throughout construction, and the fact that I didn't hear much about it is really a sign of its success. <laughs> So I'm not James Loftus. James Loftus is really the principal who's responsible for this project. He couldn't be here today. So I'm going to channel him today. Uh, and I have some uh, 
some written words which helps me channel what he's thinking, because I can't do it telepathically. So this project was initiated more than seven years ago by Nancy Tinker, the formal facilities director who passed away just before the project had started. Part of Nancy's legacy lives on with this project. And I imagine Nancy would be proud of how well the project came out and how well her team here at ECSU performed. Renee Theroux-Keach, the current director of facilities management and planning, took over the responsibilities of seeing the project through, including the critically important programming and planning phases. She brought her team to the table and facilitated a smooth decision-making process, never an easy accomplishment in an academic setting. The facilities management and planning team included Ed Figiella, James Fielding, and the facilities shops, <clears throat> who were all well-organized, well-informed, clear in their needs, and kept the project moving forward. Nick Messina and Paul Melmer from Media Services were diligent in ensuring that all the audio-visual system requirements were understood and met. Bob Hill from Central Connecticut State University provided meticulous direction on the information technology systems and standards. I would like to extend a special thank you to President Nunez, who challenged the design team, sharing her vision for the project, and in doing so, making the design significantly better. The two main challenges of the project were first, <coughs> accomplishing so much within a limited budget, and secondly, completing the phased renovation within a very short period of time. <coughs> the project would not have been a success without the dedicated team of professionals with a common goal and extraordinary persistence to meet these challenges. The highly effective teamwork between ECSU's facilities department, the State Division of Construction Services, the Board of Regents, Downs Construction Company, who acted as the contract administrator, PDS Engineering Construction, the contractor, and MDS, determined the project priorities and defined a scope of work that would fit within the budget. Todd Lucas, Dan Robertson, and Roel Abraham, representing State DCS, kept everyone on their toes, but fostered a collaborative environment allowing the team to succeed. Renee worked tirelessly with James Haworth, ECSU VP of Finance Administration, Keith Epstein, and Gerard Cotter from the Board of Regents to secure the funding and manage the overall project budget. <coughs> Dave Barkin, Chief Architect for the State of Connecticut, oversaw the project, ensuring that design would meet and exceed state standards and the needs of ECSU. Downs Construction Company, as construction administrator, provided invaluable guidance on logistics, phasing, and budget management. PDS Engineering and Construction, as the builder, along with their subcontractors, pulled off a near miracle in completing phase one in less than eight months. Randy Becker, the project manager for PDS, was unmatched in his thorough buyout of trade subcontractors and overall management of the construction team. Joe Lucia, the superintendent of construction and boots on the ground for PDS, made sure that all things, all the work was coordinated, completed on time, and to a high standard. The original goal of the project was simply to update the building systems and technology serving the building. Goddard Hall and the communication building, both constructed in the 60s and 70s, used energy inefficiently, were beyond their useful life, and were not up to current technological or space standards. But there were other challenging program goals as well. The Department of Communications needed a stronger identity. KPE was in the process of redefining their program, and the psychology department needed additional space. The design team addressed these issues while renovating the buildings to exceed the state's requirements for a high performance building, <coughs> specifically. The building was designed to be 25% better than state energy code. 33% of the materials by cost contain recycled content. Almost 25% of the materials by cost are locally sourced within 500 miles of the construction site. 89% of the demolition and construction waste was diverted from landfills. 76% of the wood used in the project is Forest Stewardship Council certified to be from a sustainable source. High energy plumbing fixtures reduced water usage by 25%. And the use of low VOC paints, sealants, adhesives, flooring systems, and composite wood products improved the indoor air quality. It was an honor for MDS to work with this team and to modernize these two buildings and to create environments that support the university's high quality programs. 
showcase creativity and engagement, and give students new places to socialize and connect. We hope these environments will enrich students' academic journeys and inspire, and inspire success in their careers beyond ECSU. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Will. My husband and I often talk when we have projects done at home about the quality of the workmanship and then he'll kvetch or I'll kvetch about, about people don't have standards anymore. The good old days, they had standards. And I will tell you, working with Randy Becker was like going back in time, a, a man who really, really cared about quality. And not only did he care about it, he managed the project with his eyes on the on the uh, complexities of each of the, the uh, workmanship issues that arose. And as I said, I, every time I came, he was here working with the people and making sure that the project not only was on time and on budget, but that the quality of the workmanship was superb. So Randy, thank you to you and to your team uh, for all that you did during the construction project. Please come. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm proud to say that I was part of the team. Um, I like to think of myself as the leader, but primarily I was adult daycare uh, for the project. Um, wonderful team, uh, great architect, uh, great owner reps, great guys from the DAS. Um, uh, we had a CA who worked with us every day. We had uh, uh, a wonderful team of uh, subcontractors who managed to get through it uh, rather quickly and without too many big major difficulties, um, which uh, is not by accident. It's a lot of hard work. It's, it, everybody makes it sound like it was just wonderful here. It was hard work, and it, it, made, it, it made a difference that everybody worked together. I'm not going to uh, overemphasize the fact that we had a great team here. Um, it made it smooth. When there were problems, and there were, um, we worked it out together. And it was simple to uh, approach one another with, with maybe solutions or, um, you know, keep an open mind about somebody else's idea. But we got through this, and the architect's design was... Uh, was really good, and, and thank you, Will, and, and especially Brian Pace for being the lead architect on the project. Just a wonderful job. Uh, I miss working with you, Brian. I'm on another state job now. I wish you were on it. I mean, how many, how many contractors say that to their architect? Okay. Um, so, and especially by way of background, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, so that's even more uh, of a, a tribute to uh, what Brian's done. Um, and of course, I have uh, uh, Todd Lucas, who was uh, always there, always there with um, you know firm but fair attitude. Uh, just a great guy to work with. And Dan Robertson from DAS. Uh, I'm not going to name everybody in the room, but those those couple people there really uh, really made this project a, a fun place to go. I didn't dread coming to work here every day. Um, and then uh, Ed Fajula from the from the uh, facilities side. And of course, Renee, um, and even, uh, where's Nick? He's hiding. Rock and roll Nick over there. Uh, uh, just a great, just a great team. A uh, lot of interface, a lot of uh, um, working together. So, um, can't say enough about that. Where's, uh, where's Joe DeSanti? Oh, he's way in the back. So, Joe DeSanti. And uh, Rob Hedden, where are you, Rob? He's way, way, guys, way in the back hiding. But that's how they were. They were in the background um, and supporting me. Uh, like I said, I'm the, I'm the like leader of the construction, and I needed all that support. Uh, I couldn't do it on my own. Um, my lovely assistant, Andrena Falbuena, is here. Uh, raise your hand, Andrena. She, she was uh, very helpful. I couldn't have done it without her. Um, and um, there's not much else to say. It was a great job. We, we stayed to the bitter end. We made sure everything was done. Um, we didn't abandon the project when we started another one, and it, it was a fun place to come back. And my own son graduated from Eastern about three years ago, yeah. so yeah. 
So uh, I'm a big fan of the college. Uh, I actually helped contribute to the construction. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. So, uh, and uh, I remember the high heels clicking, and I thought I was dreaming. You know, but uh, you know, I was ready to hand her a, a spackle bucket. You know. But uh, no, it was fun. I wish I could do another one here um, with the same team. And uh, it probably won't happen because I'm retiring after this project I'm doing now. But nevertheless, um, it was fun. And thank you so much. Thank you, Randy. I remember in one of my visits, I had wanted sconces on the other wall, outside wall. Remember Renee? And Renee told me I didn't have enough money, so I went secretly to Randy to see if I could squeeze the money. And Randy said, no, you don't have the money. But you heard this morning I have the money. So don't retire till I get those sconces in the front of the building. Now we, I'm, we're going to hear from one of our students, uh, Tyler Madden, class of 21. Good morning, everybody. It's a great honor to be with you all today. My name is Tyler Matt. I'm a junior communications major here at Eastern. I'm also an executive producer and reporter for ETV News, Eastern's 100% student-run and produced TV newscast that goes live every Thursday night right down the hall from our TV uh, studio, live streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and on our Charter Cable Local <laughs> Access channel. <laughs> I stepped onto this campus two and a half years ago with a passion for broadcast journalism, a passion for telling people stories that started two and a half years ago with my time in Manchester High School with another Eastern alum, Eric Larson. I was thrilled to continue learning here at Eastern even though we're in a temporary space during my freshman year. Walking into this new space and walking down the hall to the TV studio and control room, I couldn't believe it. What is amazing about what Eastern offers its students is the ability to, during the day, have classes in this building, take what you learn in those classes, and apply it to our ETV newscast on Thursday nights. As executive producer, writing parts of the show is one of my main responsibilities, one of my favorite parts of the role. That hands-on experience, whether it's writing segments of the show or working in the control room and studio on industry-level equipment, gives you confidence when you're out in the professional uh, setting. For example, last summer I had the opportunity to intern at NBC Connecticut in West Hartford. In only my second day at the station, one of the producers gave me the opportunity to write a short voiceover script that the anchor would read during the 4 p.m. newscast. That is the same task that I have been doing for ETV News in this building for an entire school year. So I did the research, wrote the voiceover, and submitted it to my producer. Later in the day, I went down with her to the control room and with great satisfaction listened to anchor Kevin Nathan read my script exactly the way that I wrote it. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> But that's the confidence you get from working in a building like this with professors like ETV News Advisor, Dr. Utterback, and the media services staff. If I'm allowed one plug, I would encourage everyone to go on YouTube and search Eastern CT Television and check out our shows. Thank you. You have such terrific students. Tyler makes us very proud. And now it's my privilege to introduce Andrew Utterback, the President of the Senate. That is a really big pair of scissors. Show it to them. Wow. I could use a pair like that. I'm going to have to switch glasses. Bear with me. I cannot do the progressives thing. Sorry. Now you guys are all blurry. <laughs> Even better. Good morning. Uh, my name is Andrew Utterback. I am a professor and chair of the Department of Communication. And I'm president of the University Senate. In this event today, I represent the faculty uh, I've been told to keep this under two minutes, and so I will do my best to refrain from firing off on a lecture. Okay. Uh, I have two sets, two different sets of comments prepared for today. You see, I, I had jotted a note to myself up in my office that reads, prepare, 
cutting remarks. So I started, you no good, low down, free, and wait a minute. But then I received an email from Ed that says I am to prepare remarks for the ribbon cutting. I guess then that it's a good thing that I'm going last today since the speakers that have gone before me provided the appropriate guidance. Welcome to our newly renovated building. On behalf of the faculty, I would like to extend our collective gratitude to all of you who helped to make this project a reality. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Jim. It's awesome. Now, for those of you who spend any of your personal or professional time writing, you probably know of one so-called universal truth. Editing is far, far more difficult than composition. Writing something from scratch is far easier than editing an existing piece. That same truth holds for the design of and the construction of buildings. It's far, far easier to build a brand new building from scratch than it is to renovate an old one. With that in mind, what you see surrounding you is all the more impressive but what does it mean to the faculty to teach and work in a refreshed environment like this one? By and large, if you ask that question to 25 members of the faculty, you would get 25 different answers. And yet, common themes would eventually emerge from those answers. I'll pick one with three elements. But before I get to that part, I would like to tell you that a new facility makes teaching easier, but it doesn't. I would like to tell you that a new facility makes learning easier for the students, but it doesn't. Nothing about this makes any of that easier. What it does do is altogether different. When a teaching and learning environment is clear, when it is open and well lit, teaching and learning itself becomes a process of clarity, clarity in our thinking, a process of opening, <clears throat> of opening the mind, and a process of enlightening the practice of teaching. It really is that simple. It really is that basic. <clears throat> the individual parts of the working and learning environment that were once marked, dark lighting, a rabbit's warren of hallways, dingy floors, dingy walls, faded paint, funny smells, confusing signage, dated hardware and software, broken chairs, dust, dirt, and cold and grubby offices become unmarked. In other words, all of those things that used to stand out and overcolor the environment simply vanish. Those things you see become invisible or unmarked. When an institution invests in facilities like this, the investment generates a return that is not measured in dollars. It is measured in the lives of people. That return on investment is to be most obviously observed in the now, in the everyday lives of our young men and women who attend Eastern, like Tyler. And far, far more importantly, that return on investment is then cast away into the future, into the entire lives of our students and I think that you will agree that that is a return in which the value cannot simply or easily be quantified. Thank you for attending today. Please feel free to enjoy the refreshments and wander the building. Thank you.
Thank you, Andrew. And now we're going to cut the ribbon, so I'll invite all the speakers, Regent Bud to come forward, Greg Haddad, and Susan Johnson. Go! Oh. 